Hey everybody, welcome back to another create tutorial. Today we're going to continue our series on the gimmick tool, which is how it should be pronounced, instead of gimmick or however else I was pronouncing it in the last video. So to start with, we're going to go to filter and then start gimmick. So I want to go over just like some basics for the interface before we go into the actual filters and go through them. And the reason for that is there are some extra features that will make going through these filters um, more fun, I think. So first I want to go to settings. We can change the interface by having the preview on the left or the right side. We can show the institution logos, which are down here. We can change the preview. Uh, we can always enable preview zooming if we want, um, which is you zoom in, you zoom out, right? And then the timeout, which I believe is just updating. We can change the color dialog um, by using the native or not based on the file, I believe. Um, I'm not touching those. I'm not a master with those color um, options to begin with, which I've said before. But if you know what you're doing and those actually, that is actually really helpful to you, I would go ahead and start using them. So file sources, if you have some extra filters or whatever it is you need to add in here, you can go ahead and do that. I don't, so I'm gonna leave that alone. And uh, on, the, on the other tab, this actually was important because I didn't realize you could update this. I just assumed it would update when Krita updated. So if you update Krita, but let's say in the last update 5.2.2, you know, the, the gimmick tool updated felt, uh, updated as well, but then they add, had a, a new update after 5.2.2 and created never, you know, it's not going to just update for that. You can go ahead and update it manually. You can also change it to automatic, so daily, weekly, every two weeks, monthly. Any output messages, you can change like how that looks and how that sounds. Um, you can get a notification when the update fails, we do an automatic one. When you do hit update now, which I did update before I recorded, it will tell you to restart. I went ahead and restarted Krita completely. I don't think you need to do that. I think you just need to restart the gimmick tool itself. All right, so now that we're done with those settings, I wanna go to these buttons down here. So I'm just gonna click on this. <laughs> this looks funny, but whatever. Um, we have these buttons in here. We can add to favorites, so by clicking on that, we have a filter that we like, and we can say we want to favorite this, so that way if it's something that you're going to be using repeatedly, you can always access it. And I have this in other programs I use for certain features I need to use on a frequent basis. And it automatically makes the category for you, it's at the very top for easy access. It's great. And you can also remove the favorite. So let's say you did it by accident, you know, you clicked by the wrong thing. I do it all the time. You can remove it and because that was the only fave I had, it completely removes that category. All right, so if we go ahead and we say we like the settings for one of the option filter options, we'll just kind of make this weird. We'll add it to our favorite. So if you want to rename it, um, maybe you want to rename it, say you want to use the random filter only for a specific situation. You could say, okay, use this array for backgrounds, use this array for uh, tileable uh, imagery or textures or whatever you can do that. It won't change the settings So if we go back to random, it's the same thing I'm gonna have, go ahead and remove that So here we can go ahead and click visible or not So if I click on this It shows that whether or not I have it clicked which is pretty cool I'm gonna uncheck that and then this here will expand or condense all of the filter options. So if you if you have like tons of open and you're tired of scrolling through manually, like minimizing it, you can just click that button and it minimizes or condenses everything. And then if you want everything open, for whatever reason, you can go ahead and do that. Now, if you don't want to go into your settings to update any filters, you can click this button and it will update automatically for you. So you don't have to like go through the settings. If you want to sync everything to the internet, you can do that quickly. Um, if you want to go full screen and just focus on this, you can do that. And to get out of full screen, just click the top white bar and drag it. And then when you want to apply this, you can. Actually, I don't have anything applied. We'll just do 
blockism. There we go. If I hit apply, let it process. It's now applied. Now, if I want to continue to make some changes to this, I can do that here. Which is, this is pretty gnarly. <laughs> um, and then once I'm done, I can hit OK. Because I hit apply, or I didn't hit, a, um, I didn't hit cancel, I hit OK, it's going to apply that last um, filter for me. So this is how it's going to look. Now I'm going to undo this because I don't, we've got to go over a few more things. I'm going to go back into the gimmick interface. So it's going to keep the last filter I chose. Very cool, very cool. So we can manually zoom in with the magnifying glasses and zoom out. And if we zoomed in too far, you can just hit refresh and it'll go back to the main um, view at 100%. So I'm actually going to hit close. And as you can see, nothing's been changed yet. As you can see, I was working on a single flat layer. If you'd like to work on more than one layer, you can either use a group to kind of like separate out your layers depending on what they're being used for, which I usually recommend. So for example, you want to separate the foreground from background and you want this filter to only affect the background, you'd want those layers separated out. So make sure in the group layer you're selected at the top most layer. Go to filter and start the gimmick tool. And under here on the bottom right, if you go to input layers, you can hit active and below. Or you can hit all. So this right here shows the top most selected layer here and the bottom layer, which has the white around it. You can also do active and above. Well, within this group, I don't have anything else active or visible. So it's just going to be the line art for the face. I'm not entirely sure why it says active and below and it's not showing the black lines. Um, I don't know. It could just be not sure but the owl works, which is more than enough. So here you can go ahead and start adding your filters to, to all of this. It looks like you would have to reselect the layers being affected depending on the filter you pick. So just keep that in mind. If you're changing that, you want to say all or active and below or above to affect everything with each filter you select. And we're just going to hit okay. Let that process. All right, so as you can see, it uh, made that filter for the two layers, but they're still separate. It also did that for the layer above, which makes sense because I did select all. So no big deal, but that's something that you can work with. That way you don't have to do anything crazy. Like for example, if I want to go back and start changing the white to different colors, so if you want to see how this actually looks, because it looks like a tileable texture, if you hit W, you can actually take a look at that right there. You can also hit this icon up here to see how that looks as a tiled um, image. So because I have these four as different colors, that's why there's different colors there. But maybe you want that, I don't know. So maybe you just want to make an image that you can tile like that and then tweak the colors as needed later. Lots of options and lots of things you can do with it. And that's pretty much it for like the basic introduction to the interface and some options that we can use. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. And make sure to like and subscribe, especially if you want to go into the next video to learn more about the arrays and tiles and the artistic options. We're going to do both of those. We're only going to do a couple from them because there's so many here. But once you kind of get an idea of what the arrays do, what the grids do, and what the tiles do, it's, you know, it's pretty simple to at least get an idea of all the different types. All right, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, like I said, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video in the series, and I will see you in the next video.